Do you feel like people truly understand you? Do you ever feel underestimated? A recent study by US News found that 27% of Americans rarely or never feel like people truly understand them. Are you a part of that 27%? If so, I wanna help with this video. Step number one, do you underestimate yourself? Before we talk about others underestimating you, I want to ask you a hard question, which is, do you underestimate yourself? So I struggle so much with imposter syndrome, and I found that a lot of the times I can't expect other people to find me worthy if I don't find myself worthy. And so I have a little exercise that I do that I'm hoping we can kick off this video with, and it's to start a success file. So success file is a way to remind yourself of all of your strengths, your capability, your successes. I think a lot of the time we start our day or we do our to-do list and we forget um, all of our strengths and skills. And so a success file is a very quick way to take stock of all your successes. Here's what I want you to put in your success file. So your success file immediately should make you feel good, capable, powerful, with a lot of self-confidence. This is emails from previous colleagues, friends, or employees. Any recommendations or actions accolades or endorsements you've ever gotten on LinkedIn, screenshots of nice comments or hearts or likes on social media, letters, remember letters, remember back in the day when people actually wrote letters, letters or thank you notes you've ever gotten. And this can go back to as young as you want. Whatever makes you feel good when you look at it, that goes in your success file. I have a little box where I keep all my little successes, little awards I've gotten, thank you cards I've gotten. I also have a folder in my email inbox called success file, which is filled with with all of the emails that I've gotten from students and teachers in the past. I want you to begin to build your success file so that you stop underestimating yourself. That success file is gonna give us the groundwork to make sure other people don't underestimate you. Step number two, be a giver. So I wanna start this off with a funny story. So at the very beginning of my career, I was going to conferences all the time. And I was trying to go to conferences in my industry to drum up business and make contacts and network and collect all those business cards. And they never worked. All right, I went to all these conferences and I would leave exhausted and out of money and I ate way too many appetizers and they were a complete waste of time. And so I decided to go on a little break from conferences. And at the time I was working on a new project for my blog where I was gathering up cool links where all I wanted to do was curate and share interesting people doing interesting things. And so I decided I had a conference that I'd already booked and I was, this was one of my last ones. I thought, okay, you know, I'm gonna go to this one and I'm not even gonna try to network. I was so burnt out on networking that I was like, I'm just gonna go and I'm gonna look for interesting people doing interesting things and then I'm gonna offer to feature them. I'm gonna say, hey, can I link to you? Can I feature your story? Can I interview you for my YouTube channel? So I go with this mindset. I don't even bring my business cards. I just think all I'm gonna be doing is trying to collect other, other people's business cards and help them. This conference was a completely different experience. I was going into it with the mindset of giving. All I wanted to do was look for interesting people and give them some links, some juice, some accolades to showcase them. Instead of the previous conferences, I realize now looking back, I was asking, I wanted. And I realized that this was a different mentality. It was a, an offer mentality where all I was doing was going to offer. And not only did it make me have more fun, not only was it more relaxing, but I had so many better connections and conversations. So step number two is actually not about impressing people or showing off, it's the opposite. I actually want you to think, how can you give more? Can you connect people who need things? Can you be the sharer of interesting links? Can you update people on industry news? I want you to start with an offer mentality because a lot of the times I think we're underestimated because we're in a scarcity mindset, right? We're going and we're hoping and we're wanting and we're wishing, but I want you to actually, the next step is to think about how you can give more, how you can give to the contacts you meet, how you can give to the people in your office, how you can give to your friends and family. That is actually gonna change your mentality and it's gonna make the next steps a little bit easier. Step number three, embrace the naysayers. Okay, so you're probably gonna be surprised with this one. I think there are two different kinds of people in this world. I think there are dream killers and dream builders. So dream killers, you probably know these folks. These are the ones who underestimate you. These are the people who always have something negative to say. They always poke holes in your arguments. Um, they always say, oh, that's not gonna work. That's not gonna happen. We can't do that. There's no time for that. We don't got budget for that. They're the dream killers. They kill any dream they hear. 
You know, dream killers. You know who I'm talking about? Okay. The second type of person is dream builder. Dream builders, they support you. They cheer you on. They say, you can do it. How can I help? What can we do? I want to hear more. They're curious. They're supportive. They're excited. The point about being not, not being underestimated is not just looking for dream builders and dream builders are important. It's also embracing those dream killers and embracing them at the right time. I think what the problem for me in the beginning of my career, especially when I really felt underestimated, was I just tried to dodge and avoid dream killers, and I was only searching for dream builders. The thing is, dream killers can help you, especially if you leverage them in the right way. So what I want you to think about is I want you to think about the 10 people you interact with most. Are they dream builders or dream killers? Are they people who make you feel good, excited, encouraged, stronger? They're a dream builder. Are they people who leave you feeling questionable, ambivalent, sad, discouraged? They're dream killers. You can't get rid of all the dream killers, so you have to figure out a way to embrace them. I want you to think about those 10 people, and I want you to think about when do you have the energy, the courage, and the strength to hear what the dream killers are saying and get stronger from it. The dream killers in my life When I stopped avoiding them and I started learning from them, they actually made my business stronger. So I realized, okay, I cannot see dream killers when I'm in an inventive, imaginative stage. I have to avoid them then. But I can use them when I'm practicing, when I want them to give me constructive criticism, when I want them to give me feedback. And so I prepped for my meetings and my calls and my experiences with dream killers because I was like, they have something valuable to offer, which is making me stronger. So don't get rid of them leverage them. Step number four, increase your confidence. According to NBC News, this step makes me so sad, 85% of people struggle with low self-esteem. Oh, I think that confidence is one of those things that's very, very hard to grasp, right? It's very hard for me to teach you confidence in just a short YouTube video, but I do want to try. and I want to try with one specific thing that I think is a game changer for confidence quests. You probably didn't expect me to say that, right? So I think that the best way to increase our confidence in a fast way, there's long-term ways too, is to embark on a quest or a project. This is a project or a quest with a defined goal. So learning something, doing something, building something, creating something, sharing something that you can go out and conquer. The best way that we build confidence is creating something from nothing or having a goal and accomplishing it. So here's my goal for you. If you need a little bit of a confidence boost, I want you to start a quest. And I'm really curious if you want to put your quest below in the comments. I want you to pick one thing, a project, a skill that you want to learn, build, or do. That could be um, building an outdoor garden. That could be learning the basics of a new language. It has to be quantifiable and measurable, something that you can actually finish. And I want you to set out to try to do that in the next month if you can do it in the next month. So think of a quest that you can do in the next month. I want you to think of the steps. I want you to think of the projects. I want you to share it. Tag me at Ben Edwards on Twitter or Facebook or Instagram or all the places because I want to support you in your quest. I think when we're working on something, it not only makes us more interesting, it also makes us feel more interested and more engaged. And when you finish it and you check it off, that gives you an immediate boost of confidence. So I want you to do a one month quest. It's also a really great way to make other people not underestimate you. If you're working on something, if you're doing something, if you're able to show up to work and say, I finished X or I learned Y or I mastered Z, people are much more likely to be like, huh, that person's a doer. I want that person to be you. Step number five, stop people pleasing. Are you a people pleaser? Me too. Here are some signs that you are a people pleaser. You feel anxious when people are mad at you. You say yes to events and parties you don't feel like going to. You force laughter in conversations. You feel hesitant to give your own opinion. If that's you, I want you to work on your people pleasing. Watch, we have a whole other video on this, but the very first thing I want you to think about if you're trying to tackle your assertiveness is you never have to apologize for setting a boundary. We can apologize when we're wrong. We can apologize when we've made a mistake. We can apologize when we've hurt someone's feeling. But you don't apologize for existing. You don't apologize for setting your boundaries. You don't apologize for stating and saying your needs. So for the next week, here's another challenge for you. For the next seven days, I want you to stop apologizing. 
apologize when you're wrong, but don't apologize for setting up your boundaries. Step number six, learn your smart phrases. A smart phrase is a back pocket tool or statement that you can use when someone underestimates you. Let's say, for example, that you often get underestimated in meetings with your colleagues or your team, where you feel like you're not getting the assignments that you want or people aren't um, giving you the quality of work that you would like. I want you to think of a smart phrase that you can keep in your back pocket. Here's some of my favorites. I want to step up on this task. How can I help in a bigger way? I would love to help. What more can I do? Would you mind giving me some insight into these assignments? Is there a reason you have me on this one? I think I can do even better. I'd love a challenge on this one. Have anything else for me? You'll notice I put this smart phrase step after people pleasing because if people are underestimating you, you have a right to question them. You have a right to stand up for yourself. And these smart, polite, nice, but still assertive phrases will help you. So I want you to think of the way that you're most often underestimated and think of a polite, kind, but assertive way you can stand up for yourself. Step seven, stay calm and move on. Listen, there are going to be people that underestimate you and there's nothing you can do about them because you know what? They suck, right? There are people who just aren't worth your time and your energy. So if you've gone through all these steps, you've had your quest, you've built your confidence, you've been setting up boundaries, you're saying no, there are some people who just aren't worth your energy and time. And so this step is a mental game. And I want you to make the short list of the people who not even are dream killers, but you don't want to give them any more of your mental energy. If you have that short list of people, make that list of people. And when you begin to think about them, politely excuse them. I have a short list of people who I don't want to take my mental energy. And when they pop into my head, typically late at night, when I'm laying in bed and I'm worrying about my day, and they come into my head and I think, no, thank you. And I take my energy back. So make your short list of people who don't deserve your time and energy and move on. Step number eight, stay humble. I want to read you one of my favorite quotes. Are you ready? I love this. Take a screenshot of it. Write it down. Put it on your mirror. Put it on your social media. It's my favorite. Here it goes. There's no freedom quite like the freedom of being constantly underestimated. Thank you, Scott Lynch. I love this quote because it sort of flips everything on its head. This whole video we've been talking about not being underestimated, but maybe being underestimated gives you some freedom. So if you've gone through all these steps and you still feel a little underestimated, use it to your advantage. If people don't notice you, what can you get away with? If people don't notice you, what can you learn and work on for yourself? If people underestimate you, how can you constantly surprise them? Sometimes being underestimated gives you an advantage. Step number nine, focus on yourself. Here's one of my big pushes for this video. I want you to think of yourself like a bank account. You have to make investments in yourself to make sure you're not underestimated. So I want you to pay attention to two things. So if you have a pen and paper right now, hopefully you've been taking some notes with all the lists we've been making, but I want you to officially get out a pen and paper now. And I want you to make two lists. The first list are the skills that you wish you had. And these are specifically technical skills. So are there language skills, programming skills, computer skills, um, uh, uh, job skills, professional certifications? Are there skills that you wish you had? And by the way, if you don't have anything for this list, I want you to pause this video and think again, because one of the reasons you might not, you might be being underestimated is because you need to add more skills to your repertoire, certifications, learnings, reading certain books, educating yourself on certain technical skills. So I want you to make a list of the technical skills you wish you had. And by the way, these can even be things to make you more productive, like uh, how to speed read or uh, how to organize your desk or how to uh, create habits. So anything in the productivity technology space or technical skills or professional skills, I want you to add to that list. The second list I want you to make is your list of people skills you need. And this is the list that we most often forget about. I want you to think about what people skills do you wish you had to be more successful? This could be making conversation, having a great first impression, being able to negotiate, being able to build rapport, being able to sell, being able to make a great first impression on video, uh, being able to chit chat, being able to network, presentation skills or public speaking, being able to do videos. Your second list is all the soft skills, communication skills, or people skills you wish that you had. Step number 10, always be learning. 
Okay, so I want you to take those two lists from skill number nine, and this is our last step. I want you to pick one skill from each list that you are going to master and learn. We talked about quests in one of the previous steps. A learning quest is the other kind of quest you can do. This is trying to master a skill that you can add to your tool belt, that you can add to your resume, that you can add to your LinkedIn profile. I want you to pick one technical skill and one people skill that you're going to learn in the next 60 days. The reason why this is important is because we often underestimate people who are stagnant. You know what I mean by stagnant? We underestimate people who we feel aren't moving, aren't creating, aren't achieving. If you're on a quest, if you're learning a technical skill, if you're mastering a people skill, it's hard for people to underestimate you because you're being assertive with your learning. You're doing, you're achieving, you're working on yourself. And so my secret motive for this video is to get you in motion, is to get you so that you're achieving things and other people see it and that becomes contagious. And they think, I I don't want to underestimate that person anymore. They're doing really big, exciting, interesting things. So this last step is to create these learn a learning bucket list, a, a list of the things that you still want to learn. Hopefully one technical skill and one people skill. Whew. We're at the end of our video. Friend, I don't underestimate you. In fact, it drives me crazy that you are underestimated. My entire goal with every video I have is to help you achieve your goals faster. I hope this video gave you some concrete steps. I hope a couple of them got you excited. I hope you took lots of notes. If you like this video, please give it a like and tell me in the comments what you're learning, what your quests are, what your commitments are. And I can't wait to see how people underestimate you less and see your worth more.